spot. At first this photo just looks like a silly good time between two boys, but what happens next is when it gets kind of crazy. The two in the photo are brothers, Michael and Sean McQuilkin, and it is from August 20th, 1975, when they were at Morro Rock in Sequoia National Park in California. The photo was taken by their sister Mary after they all thought that their hair standing up was absolutely hilarious and decided to snap a few photos to remember the moment. Well, they surely will never forget it because just a few moments after after this photo was taken, they were actually struck by lightning. One of the brothers said that he raised his hand into the air and that the ring he had on was buzzing, and then suddenly they were all on the ground and smoke was pouring out of Sean's back. The good news is that they all survived the lightning that day, but I bet it certainly wasn't the day that they had planned. Number 9. Big Island Hiker In 2015, Dalen Pua decided to go on a hike in Hawaii. He told his grandmother he was going to be hiking the Stairway to Heaven Trail, which his grandmother warned against as this was a prohibited area. While on his hike, he posted several pictures to social media. Most seemed to be normal, just showing off the view. However, in one photo, you can see a man amongst the trees, following behind Dalen. While a mysterious man in the woods is creepy enough, it gets worse, as Dalen unfortunately never returned from his hike, and to this day, he has never been found. His family studied the pictures closely, trying to find any clues to his whereabouts, and when they spotted the figure, they started to wonder if maybe he he had been responsible for Dalen's disappearance. People wonder why this person has not come forward, wondering if it's because he was involved or he was just scared of being caught hiking on an illegal trail. The search for Dalen consisted of the fire department, local volunteers, drone operators, and even the US Navy. And unfortunately, nothing has ever been found. Number 8. Trails in the Snow Another hiking photo, this one comes from a mountain in the Karakoram Himalaya. Greatly accomplished mountaineer Kurt Diemberger was accompanied by his friend Herman Buhl. Buhl had been excited about the expedition, wanting to complete the hike in only three days. The photo that Diemberger took seems to be normal, a photo of their tracks on the snowy mountain. However, when you look closely, you can see that one of the tracks does not continue, instead falling off the side. This is because Diemberger took this photo after Herman Buhl fell off the side of the mountain. Retreating from a snowstorm, Buhl stepped off to the side, triggering a massive avalanche and fell almost 900 meters down the slope, never to be seen again. Diemberger notes how in this situation they had not been roped together, which would have been considered a mistake in any other scenario. In this case, however, he says that if they were tied together, that he would have been pulled down, becoming lost in the avalanche with his friend as well. He went on to say that he would never attempt that mountain again, as without Bull, there is no point. Number 7. Basketball Card By all accounts, this appears to be a regular NBA Hoops card, showcasing Mike Jackson from the Knicks. However, if you look at the two young men on the left, you will realize that they are actually the Menendez brothers, Eric and Lyle. If you're not familiar, the Menendez brothers were from a wealthy family and were found guilty of killing their parents after they had allegedly mistreated them. The two weren't immediately caught and went on a spending spree and apparently watched a New York Knicks game. That's right, this photo was actually taken after the crime and before they had been arrested. After the discovery of the card, the Daily Mail was actually able to contact Lyle Menendez in San Diego prison, where both brothers are housed. He said, It's amazing that somebody spotted it. Also commenting on the haunting period that took place after the crime and before the arrest, saying that they went to a lot of Knicks games before, so going to one after wouldn't have been that extravagant. The cards are now available on eBay, usually going for about five to ten dollars. Number 6. Rodney Alcala During the 1970s, a famous game show aired called The Dating Game. The purpose of this show is for one woman to speak to three hidden men, asking them questions. By the end of the show, she chooses the one she wants to go on a date with, and after the show, they go. 17-year-old Leanne Leadham appeared on the show with her three eligible bachelors, one of which was Rodney Alcala. The show goes fine and nothing seems too out of the ordinary, Rodney even being selected as the man she would go on a date with. What viewers and producers of the show didn't know was that when Rodney was sitting on that chair, he had already committed four murders. It's eerie to watch the episode with the hindsight of what had happened. Luckily for Leanne, she changed her mind and never actually went on the date with Rodney, only having a photo shoot together. It makes you wonder just how many other people you've seen on TV or in photos who are actually hiding a terrible secret. 
Number five. Autograph. This photo from 1980 isn't all too concerning. It shows John Lennon signing an autograph. The reality of it, however, is that he was signing an autograph for Mark Chapman, the man who merely a few hours later would kill him as he returned home from a recording studio. Chapman had approached Lennon with a fairly rare record asking Lennon to sign it for him. Lennon then asked, is that all? To which Chapman replied with, no. Chapman says that at the time this picture was taken, he actually had the weapon in his pocket, but had chickened out of committing the crime at this time. He then went back to Lennon's apartment where he waited for several hours, reading Catcher in the Rye. Finally, as John returned home from the recording studio with tapes under his arms, Chapman shot him. He returned to reading his book until a security guard arrived, the man in tears asking if Mark realized what he had done. Mark was justly sentenced to life in prison. Number 4. Space Crew In this photo, we see the smiling faces of seven astronauts posing in zero gravity. Unfortunately, as with most things on this list, this story does not have so happy an ending. That's because this is the crew of the Columbia Space Shuttle. The crew spent 24 hours a day in two different shifts, doing various different experiments in life sciences, material sciences, fluid physics, and others. Eventually, they were ready to return home to Earth in 2003. However, their re-entry would prove disastrous. On launch, it was discovered that a piece of foam had broken off and left a hole in the left wing. This hole allowed atmospheric gases to get into the ship, the ship eventually completely breaking apart. NASA suspended any shuttle flights for at least two years as they investigated and were apparently criticized as the issue with foam that caused the disaster had been previously known by the organization. This led to the retirement of the space shuttle fleet, astronauts now making their way to the International Space Station by means of Russian rockets or the SpaceX Space Taxi Service. Number 3. The Oscars This photo is of Howard Ashman and Alan Menken. It shows the two men celebrating as they had just won an Oscar. They had written the lyrics and music for The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin, and in this photo, they were receiving the award for The Little Mermaid. While they seem excited, if you look closely at Howard Ashman on the left, it seems like something is wrong. That night, Ashman told Mencken that when they got back to New York, they needed to have a serious talk. Two days later, they returned and they spoke. Howard told Allen that he had been diagnosed with late stage AIDS and didn't have much longer to live. Mencken says he recalls Ashman saying, I didn't want to tell you because I didn't know how Disney would react. Here I am, a gay man, and I'm working on a movie for kids, and I didn't want to be fired. As Disney found out, they instead did everything they could to allow him to continue to work on Beauty and the Beast, even packing up their storyboards and going to his home in New York. Howard later died in 1991 with a long list of accomplishments behind him. Number 2. Memorial Photos these photos look like any other historical portrait. An important fact to note about taking pictures in the olden days was that it took a long time. Like a really long time. I'm talking hours. There was definitely no quick selfie taking back then. Because of this, it was common for the subjects in photos to appear a bit blurry, because you can't expect people to be able to keep perfectly still. But if you look closely at those photos, you'll probably notice that some of the subjects are incredibly clear. Were they just masters of staying still? Well, you could say that since some of the people in these photos aren't alive. And I don't just mean because it's been so long that they've passed away by now, I mean they aren't alive in the photos. Doing this was actually incredibly common back then and seen as a way to memorialize your loved ones and help lessen grief. It is commonly referred to as post-mortem photography and the people in the photos were often propped up on stands in order to be held in place. Number 1. Jeannie This may look like the portrait of a normal little girl, but the truth of her story is the exact opposite of normal. Jeannie Wiley is well known as one of the most popular examples of a feral child, and this is a photo of her. She had been kept tied to a chair for the majority of her childhood, not allowed to speak or cry, her father having often barked and growled at her like a dog. She became an important look into how the minds of children are shaped and how important it is to learn from a young age. While she learned some words, it seems that she never fully learned how to speak properly. Although she couldn't speak, she seemed to be learning quickly and she actually performed well on intelligence tests. She learned to draw, dress herself, and enjoy music. While she was incredibly popular and widely discussed, no one knows exactly where she is now. She's apparently in an adult foster care home somewhere in California, now over 60 years old. One of the gods of rock and roll, a man who paved the way for the carefree and breakout behavior.
behavior of the 70s. His music would define a generation, and the things he could do with a guitar would shake the heavens themselves, and this was the last picture taken of him. This guy was so legendary that there were several rumors created about this rock icon, most of them related to his music career and his habitual partying. People said he used to put acid in his headband when he went out to play. Eventually he would start to sweat and the LSD would seep into his skin and he would be on a wild ride of psychedelics while playing in front of thousands of people. I can't even imagine what that experience would have been like. There's also talk that he wrote the whole song Purple Haze about an LSD trip but the official statement is that it was a dream. But unfortunately his partying lifestyle eventually caught up with him. Jimi Hendrix was found dead on the floor of a hotel room after he fixated on his own vomit. This was caused by a cocktail of drugs and alcohol that he had taken and then he would join the infamous 27 club. In our number 9 spot, this photo was taken by David Seymour in 1948. This photo was taken in Warsaw and the child in the photo is named Terezka who was in a home for emotionally disturbed children after being raised in a concentration camp. The drawing on the blackboard is what she drew when the children were asked to draw home. While it is obviously common for children to have indistinguishable drawings, her backstory and the look in her eyes really tell a story. I hope she was able to grow and overcome some of the horrible things that she had been put through. I really wish I could know exactly what she was trying to draw and depict. In our number 8 spot, this is a photo from 1991 and is of Rajiv Gandhi who is the 6th Prime Minister of India. He took office after his mother had been assassinated and was the youngest Prime Minister at only 40 years old. This photo was taken by a 21 year old local photographer named Haribabu, but little did everyone know this would be the last photo he took and the last photo ever taken of Rajiv. Moments after this photo was taken, the woman in the bottom left corner with the orange flowers in her hair approached Rajiv and when she she bent down to touch his feet, she detonated a belt of explosives that she had on under her dress. This explosion ended up killing them all and around 13 other people. Haribabu's camera ended up staying intact throughout the blast and this is how we were able to retrieve this photo. Coming in at number 7. This photo carries quite the backstory. This photo is of Violet Spears who was born in Elgin, Scotland in 1839. She was married at 15 and by the time she was 22 she had 4 children. At 33 her husband ended up passing away due to a hunting accident and Violet then packed up her and the kids and went to her sisters where they all remained for 2 years. After these two years, Violet just disappeared from her sisters, leaving all of her children behind. No one heard from her for a year after she left, but money began to be sent to them monthly. In 1876, a medium and hypnotist named Madame Violet began to gain popularity in Edinburgh. She had a small following at the time that she called her hive. Slowly her seances began to get more elaborate and outrageous, and she slowly began to ask clients to donate small bits of blood, saying that it helped her connect to the spirits. She would actually drink the blood given to her and she has been quoted saying that this element returned to me had been missing my whole life. Eventually her hive grew and they all ended up living together and would only come out at night. They would attract and convince men and women, usually with the help of drugs and alcohol, to donate a bit of blood and most often would convince these people to leave their lives to come and join the hive. The hive continued to grow for the coming decade but when the son of a prominent councilman joined the hive and ended up developing an infection from the bloodletting and actually died, the hive was condemned and they ended up being disbanded. Madame Violet ended up living until 1930 where she died at the age of 90. In our number 6 spot. This photo comes from what is left of the Eastern State Penitentiary in Pennsylvania. This prison used to be the most famous and the most expensive in the world, but now this is the sort of thing that is left of it. This prison is actually now used as a tourist attraction and it becomes a haunted house during Halloween. The prison used to house some pretty high profile prisoners such as Scarface himself, Al Capone. The prison was opened in 1829 and was known for its advanced technology for the time. Things like central heating, flush toilets and shower baths in each cell. These were all considered luxuries in 1829. The first prisoner to be held there was Charles Williams who was facing a two year sentence for theft. When he arrived at the prison he had a hood over his head so as to protect his identity but also so that he wouldn't know what the rest of the prison looked like so he would be unable to plan an escape. 
While prison is never good, the craziest thing about this specific one is that all the prisoners lived in isolation. I can't even imagine what that would be like, especially for the people who found themselves in there for long periods of time. Number 5 this photo is a series of self-portraits by the artist William Utter Molin. In 1995, William was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, which is an incredibly difficult thing to have to go through. William's self-portraits obviously reflect a lot of what was going on in his mind during some of the last years of his life. Part of what Alzheimer's does is that it affects the part of the brain that we use for visualizing things, which is part of the reasons why the paintings began to get so different from the original. This series of paintings is actually sometimes used as a study material for medical students because it does such a wonderful job at portraying something that a person without Alzheimer's wouldn't be able to understand. I think William left the world with something very sad, but also beautiful, poignant, and important. Number four. This photo comes from the 19th century from the third plague pandemic. This was the first time that the plague had spread to all five continents. While we now know something about what that might have been like, what we haven't had to endure are doctors that are dressed like this. This is a photo of the outfits and masks that plague doctors wore when they would come to your house to treat or diagnose you. The long beak-like noses of the masks are very creepy, but they were used to hold herbs and other nicely scented things because they believed that this would help ward off the bad air, which at the time is what they thought was causing the sickness. The COVID-19 pandemic has been bad enough, so I'm very glad that our doctors and nurses can stick to their scrubs and regular masks. There's something about these outfits that just make it seem like something bad is about to happen. Number three. This photo looks like a big lump of nothing, but it is called an elephant's foot. Don't worry, at first I was worried, but it has nothing to do with elephants and is only named that because of its appearance. This lump was actually created from the Chernobyl nuclear meltdown and is just a mass of corium and other materials that were in the core of the reactor. This elephant's foot was located in the steam distribution corridor, which is under what's left of the reactor. While this mass doesn't produce as much radiation as it did before, it does still produce a deadly amount but it is said that if you stood in front of it for just 300 seconds, that would be enough to get a lethal dose of radiation. It's kind of crazy that even though they knew this, they were still standing there taking pictures of it, but I'm glad because now we get to see it and it gives us just a little more insight into what happened that day. Number two. This photo is of a man named Chris McCandless, who may be better known as Alex Supertramp. Chris was a traveler who inspired the book and movie Into the Wild, which were created to follow the story of his life, and more specifically, his final great Alaskan adventure. This photo is unfortunately the last photo taken of Chris while he was on this Alaskan trip, and he ended up passing away in the wilderness. A lot of people have speculated that this photo was taken as his sort of goodbye. It is highly debated how he died, so there isn't quite a concrete answer of what exactly exactly happened to him. It is a very unfortunate end to such a young man's life, but he left quite a legacy. His story has inspired countless people and holds a special place in a lot of people's lives. He was a man who rejected conformity and materialism, and with his life and death, he really left an important message for all of us to take a step back and remember what is really important. While the story has such a sad ending, there's also a lot of beautiful things that we can take from it. And in our number one spot today. This photo was taken by Fred Blackwell on May 28th, 1963, and is actually showing us a moment of protest. The three sitting at the counter are Joan Trumpor, Ann Moody, and their sociology teacher, John Salter. The reason why this photo is so important is because these three are sitting at a white-only counter at Woolworth's Five and Dime store in Jackson, Mississippi, while being assaulted by an angry mob. People are throwing condiments at them and I'm sure saying some pretty nasty things. Things. The two students went to Tougaloo College, which was a black college that ended up being at the core of the civil rights movement in Mississippi. It's amazing to see how brave they are, and a photo like this really is such an important message for us to remember today. Number 10, the Hartley Violin. While this may seem like just a photo of an old violin, the story behind it is incredibly significant. This is because the instrument managed to survive the sinking of the Titanic. We all know the story of the ship that hit the iceberg and sank, so let me tell you the story of Wallace Henry Hartley. Hartley was the band leader on the Titanic, and the violin was an engagement gift from his fiancée before he 
took off on the journey. He was one of the players who stood on the deck of the ship and played music while it sank, attempting to calm the frightened passengers as they boarded lifeboats. Hartley was found two weeks later, clutching the case that was strapped to his body. Inside it was his violin, still in good condition thanks to the case protecting it from the water and cold. It went on to be the most valuable titanic artifact ever sold, selling at auction for $1.7 million. It is now displayed at a history museum in Branson, Missouri, going on to survive long after it played its final notes on the ship. Coming in at number 9 we have John F. Kennedy. But guys before I go any further make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel because it really helps us out. Also hit that bell notification so you never miss an upload from us. Thank you. Alright, so this photo was one of the last photos of John F. Kennedy. It was taken just before his assassination in Dallas on November 22nd, 1963. In the photo, you can see President Kennedy in his car, waving to the audience. A little while later, at 12.30pm, he was shot in the head and died instantly. This may be one of the last photos of him, but someone managed to capture his very last moments on film. Abraham Zapruder was filming Kennedy while this all went down and got every gory detail on camera. That's extremely sad. Coming in at number 8 we have Carrie Fisher. She was the first love for so many nerds out there. Every kid growing up in the 80s remembers Princess Leia in a bronze bikini being kept by the disgusting Jabba the Hutt. But Carrie Fisher will always be remembered because she's one of the most important parts of the biggest movie franchise in the world. And she's had a pretty amazing career, but eventually old age will get all of us. This was the last picture taken of the famous actress. A fan stopped her in the street and asked her for a picture and the kind soul that she is she obliged. The next day she would be on a plane and partway through the flight she started to experience some chest pains. Fisher was experiencing a heart attack in the air. The pilot landed and she was rushed to the hospital but she would pass away four days later. In our seventh spot we have Sharon Tate. These beautiful photos of Sharon Tate were taken a couple of days before she was brutally murdered by the Manson family. In the photo she was eight and a half months pregnant with her first child. You can see her posing for photos with her baby bump showing pride. A couple days later, on August 8th, Manson ordered his cult followers to go to the home that Sharon was renting and have everyone there gruesomely murdered. Why? Well, some say it's because the home's previous owner, a music producer, Terry Melcher, pissed off Charles by not giving him a recording contract. It's just sad that Sharon had to die like that and so young. Had they rented a different house, things may have been different. Coming in at number 6 we have Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze was the man of his day. Roadhouse, Dirty Dancing, Point Break, Red Dawn, Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko! Sorry. All those Great movies. movie. Great movie. He was not only one of the biggest stars of his generation, but he was also a heartthrob and known for being in incredible shape. That's why the news of his sickness shook the world so hard. Patrick Swayze would be diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer and step away from film because of how ill he was. This was the last photo ever taken of him. It's wild to see this guy like this since he used to be known for having a rock solid body, but he's withered away. It really makes you see how devastating cancer can be to a person. On the brighter side, his last moments were spent with his family, which is how I'm sure he wanted to spend them. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Elvis Presley. In this photo taken on August 16th, 1977, we see Elvis Presley driving home after just visiting his dentist. Little did we know that later that day he would be found dead in his bathroom by his girlfriend. Look at him driving home unaware that he was going going to die shortly after. Now apparently his death is due to heart failure from ongoing drug abuse, but it's also thought that maybe the codeine pills that the dentist gave him had something to do with his death. He was known to have a mild allergy to codeine. It's thought that maybe that drug just pushed him over the edge that day. Had he not been to the dentist, maybe things would have been different. Coming in at number 4 we have Prince. We are back again with one of the best rock stars of all time. Prince will go down as one of the best musicians on earth. He could literally play everything. Dave Grohl was once asked if he thought that Prince was a better musician than him and he said dude Prince is a better drummer than me. That's how good Prince is. Not to mention his persona. He was a character that was so uniquely him we probably won't see someone like Prince around for a very long time. I think a few of you out there remember the Dave Chappelle sketch about Prince. This bores me. 
Is anyone up for a game of basketball? Apparently this guy could ball seriously as well, which is nuts. But Prince's intense lifestyle eventually caught up with him. He started having serious health problems. People say that from performing nearly every night and wearing high heels constantly, he developed terrible hip and back problems. This led to him eventually needing serious painkillers to function, and this sadly led to an overdose. This was the last picture of him alive. In our third spot, we have Princess Diana. This photo was taken on August 31st, 1997, just before Diana died in a car crash. In the photo taken by paparazzi, we can see Diana in the car with her rumored boyfriend. Moments after the picture was taken, the intoxicated driver lost control of the car and crashed into a pillar. The driver and her boyfriend died instantly. Diana suffered from a concussion, a broken arm, cut thigh, and massive chest injuries. She died later in the hospital as a result. It's so sad. No one ever thought that this was going to happen to them. Especially Diana, who got into the car thinking she was going to arrive at her destination safely. Coming in at number two, we have Steve Irwin, otherwise known as the Crocodile Hunter. Steve was known for wrestling crocodiles and getting up close and personal with other dangerous creatures. The last photos taken of him were by tourists on September 4th, 2006. They saw him filming a documentary and stopped to take photos. One of the photos caught Steve waving to his fans. A little while later, Steve would die after a stingray's barb pierced through his chest. What's even more scary is that his last words were, I'm dying. That is so heartbreaking to think about. Coming in at the number one spot, we have Martin Luther King, one of the greatest men who ever lived. Martin Luther King fought tirelessly to push America towards a world of equality, to make the USA a place where people from every race could work side by side and didn't need to worry about the color of their skin. It's because of him and other people like him that we have the Civil Rights Act. On April 3rd, 1968, Dr. King was set to appear in Tennessee to talk about how black factory workers were being paid substantially less than their white co-workers for the same job. This was the last picture of him taken. Not long after this picture was taken, Martin Luther King was assassinated. He would be shot on the balcony, all because he thought that people of different races should be treated equally. We talk about people like this now so we don't forget what they've done for us. Mm -hmm.